Okay, today we're going to be doing some more chronograph testing, handgun versus carbine and rifle, this time in 357 Magnum. The three loads we have are Hornady's 125 grain XTP, Underwood's loading of the same bullet XTP, Hornady claims 1500 feet per second, Underwood claims 1700 feet per second. That seems a bit optimistic, but we'll see. And the third load is Buffalo Boar's 158 grain jacket at hollow point. They don't specify or they don't say exactly what hollow point it is, but that really looks for all the world like an XTP to me. I've been reloading 357 for lowered 30 plus years, and that looks like a XTP to me. <coughs> so. The three guns we'll be using are a reproduction 1892 rifle, full-size rifle with 24-inch barrel, uh, 1892 carbine with an obviously period correct red dot, and a 16-inch barrel threaded for a suppressor, and a Smith & Wesson 686 with 3-inch barrel. I'd rather be using a 4-inch barrel gun, but Three inches what I have right now, so that's what we'll be using. So let me get set up and see if we can get rolling on this and see if the silly chronograph will cooperate. Late afternoons, the sun really plays hob with chronograph readings just because of the direction and orientation my targets are set up. So, first up. The Hornady loading of the 125 XTP from the revolver. Thirteen seventy nine and fourteen twenty five. Same load, the Hornady 125 XTP from the 16 inch carbine. Twenty seventeen. And twenty seventy eight. Okay, the 24 inch gun with the Hornady 125. Let's see if there's much functional difference between a 16 and a 24 inch barrel. $21.89 and $22.33. Okay. Now the second load up. The Underwood loading of the 125 XTP. They're claiming 200 feet per second hotter than the Hornady loading. We'll see how realistic that is from the three inch revolver. 1464 and 1435. Okay. The Underwood 125 XTP from the 16 inch gun. $21.89 
2151. Twenty one ninety two. The Underwood. Loading of the Hornady 125 XTP, this time from the 24 inch full size rifle. 2300 even. And 2265. Now for the one I'm really not been looking forward to, the Buffalo Bore from the three inch revolver. This is a Buffalo Bore 158 grain. <laughs> Corey Clap, 1376. And 1404. On the face of it, that doesn't sound like compressive velocity, but that's a lot of energy when you figure that's a 158 grain bullet, especially from only a three inch gun. Okay, now the Buffalo Bore 158 grain from the 16 inch carbine. Nineteen thirty eight. in 1954. Hey, last one up. The 158 Buffalo Bore from the Full size 24 inch rifle. Twenty thirty nine. I read that. And Place where it's not reflecting so much. That's a little better. Okay. There you go. You can see. Going from a three inch revolver, even to the 16 inch carbine, more than doubled the energy 
with the Hornady factory load. Going from the 3 inch to the full size rifle 24 inch, almost 150% increase. So two and a half times as powerful. That's 1,356 foot pounds of energy, keeping in mind a, <coughs> even a full size AR-15 generally doesn't do quite that much and a, even a 30-30 rifle only is generally 16, 17, maybe 1,800 feet per second depending on the load. I'm sorry, foot-pounds of energy depending on the load. The Underwood, very similar to the uh, Hornady factory loading. They claim 200 feet per second higher and they only got 50 to 100 feet per second higher. That's still pretty good though. 833 feet per second faster out of the rifle and out of the revolver. And again, 148% increase in muzzle energy. The Buffalo Bore, that is no fun to shoot out of a three inch gun. That is 677 foot pounds of energy from a three inch revolver. That's just not entertaining. Now going even to the 16 inch carbine, keeping in mind that 16 inch carbine is no bigger than a Ruger 1022 rimfire. That is not a big gun. But just that extra barrel length doubles the energy from 677 to 1328, just darn near double. And going to the 24 inch barrel more than doubles it. So anyway, that's what it is. That's what they shook out to. I was hoping the Underwood would come close to matching their 200 foot gain over the Hornady. Uh, but there's only so much you can do staying within pressure limits. So anyway, hope someone finds this interesting. Thanks.